All right, and so we uh, can we quickly go through um, how you took this and set it up in Trade Lab, um, like yeah, and we so in order to do this, uh, I mean, kind of this is kind of the last couple of iterations of strategies that I've been doing. Uh, let me scroll down to this thing where. So I actually missed recording the first part of that, and I don't know if you wanted that recorded or not, but I am going to record this part right here. If that's all right. It's fine. Uh, so basically, I'm just kind of gathering all the indicators. I've got, uh, you know, crossing up, crossing down rules, you know, for the ADX. Uh, so I've got these rule blocks that are just set values on a Boolean uh, variable. So I've got a variable for each one of my values, uh, true, false, and I'm basically plugging those over to the exit rules. So everything that's getting data from my indicators is also in the uh, exit rules. So ADX crossing down 30, ADX crossing down 30, uh, ADX crossing down 40, ADX crossing down 40. So I'm just kind of going through and doing that for all the indicators, setting the values to true or false. Um, I have the Hancock VWAPs, so these are basically the same thing. They're just doing the true or false. It's above or below. So I do that for all the indicators that I'm using, uh, and then I actually have the entry rules. So this is what I figured out today. So the 14 Hancock VWAP, when it crosses up the rolling VWAP, I want to I want to keep along. So I'm looking right now. I was getting some weird double entry stuff, so I set this up to check if I'm in a trade or not. So if I'm not in a trade, and then the DI positive is above the DI negative, is true. And I get a signal for the 14 period a Hancock VWAP crossing up and place an open order. And then I have a rule that basically resets all my variables. But uh, same thing, I have another rule for so this depends on the timing of which one crosses first in the type of situation you're in. So it, the 21 Hancock, which is the slower one, uh, it crosses up. Uh, so it's the same thing. It checks to see if I'm in a trade or not. If DI positive is above DI negative is true, and I get a signal, then open the trade. And I have another one. This is kind of like another scenario that, you know, depending on where things are at, uh, this is the third entry condition, which is basically if uh, 10 period and 21 Hancock VWAPs are both above the rolling VWAP, and I get a nine EMA crossing up the rolling VWAP. That's like if it went up and dipped back down and came back up again, it's basically taking that extra opportunity to get in. So if it closed the last trade, you're basically getting back in again before it leaves, leaves the station. Um, so that's basically what this is. Uh, but it's just checking the values of these variables to see if they're true. And if they are, uh, then, and I'm not in a trade, they get a signal, then open a, open a trade. All the entry stuff. Uh, let's go to the take. So take one. Uh, basically saying if the ADX is above 30 and my current price is greater than the entry price. I, I've been playing around with this and trying to set like minimums and stuff, but I that kind of shoots me in the foot on some of these little smaller scalp trades. Mm -hmm. So I figured as long as it's as long as it's higher than my entry price, it's a profit. Then I uh if my take counter is at one, then get a signal, which is my uh, RSI crossing down of the RSI EMA on the one minute. And I basically, I'm playing with some ideas of the unrealized and realized profit. So I'm setting some variable values, incrementing my take counter so I know what take I'm on. And I set my last take price to the current price. So I can use this as context for my next take uh, rule. And I'm taking out, I'm decreasing the trade by 10% of my position. And I'm running a rule called count profit. Uh, so take two is basically the next one. Uh, it's basically if EDX is above 40, 
uh, this time and doing this to kind of get dynamic sizing. Uh, but basically it says if, uh, sorry, this is above 30. So if it's saying if it's below 40 and above 30 and my take count is higher than one, which means I've already had a previous take and my current price is higher than the last take profit price and I get a signal and then take another uh, chunk of the position out. And it basically increments the counter again. I'm taking 25% this time, right? Uh, and then the third take is basically anything higher than 40 ADX. So it says if ADX is above 40, uh, and this was already true, uh, and the count is greater than one, and my current price is higher than my last take price, uh, and I get a signal, then take a bigger amount. So this time I'm doing a third of what's left. My thought was using the ADX is also a way to, to, to dynamically size the take position. So like if it's in a super hot swing, for example, let's go back. So like this guy right here, where it's like up above 50, I mean, this is going to be pretty much the, the, the lowest, almost lowest point in your, in your swing here. So mm -hmm. this would basically say take 33% of the trade out right here. And down here would be also be probably about another third and down here would be about another third. So you wouldn't have a whole lot left by the time it closes out. The, the thought was like, let's get the most out of these big moves. So this out thing is uh, something I haven't really got working yet. So that's something I was trying to figure out how to how to do like a quick and dirty uh, unrealized and realized profit. But seems to be working. Uh, just got it. I just literally just got all this stuff worked out this morning. So it's it's uh this is kind of how I've been doing my other strategies that I've been sharing with you over the last few weeks. It's very similar setup the way I do them. So and so to recap, that similar setup is really that you are looking for particular flags, particular things to be hit on your chart. You're sending uh basically what ends up being like up and down alerts for each particular thing that you're looking for, whether that be VWAP or RSI, you're, you're looking at a particular event, maybe the RSI EMA cross or something. And as that crosses, you're turning on a variable, you've created a variable and you're, it's a true and false variable. So basically what you're doing is you're taking one alert and when that variable comes in or that alert comes in, you're putting the variable to true and when another alert fires that is undoing that, maybe it crosses back down or whatever the case, then you're setting that variable to false as well. Are you using uh, timeouts? Uh, no. Okay. Timeouts. Okay. Uh, but, but basically, you actually summarize it. So, like, the ADX is a good example. So, I've got these little lines in here. So, I've got like uh, 20, 30, 40, 50. Right? So, when this blue line crosses up 20, that's a signal. It sets the value to true, and then it crosses above 30, and it sets the ADX crossing or uh, ADX above 30 variable to true. This one would be the ADX 40 variable goes to true. I don't have one for 50 yet, but I'm just doing like 20, 30, and 40. Uh, but I figured that you know, once it crosses the 30 line, I'm looking for take signals. Right? This would be a take signal. Uh, this would be a take. Can you show the alerts themselves? Just curious on a couple of them. Yeah, uh, which one? Which which one do you want to see? Well, which one do you use most? The crossing, crossing up, crossing down. Is that how you're? So anytime and, those yeah, fire, so, so like like yeah. Here's the here's the. Uh, so let's just do so the way I typically do these. So here's one. It's the twenty one Hancock. So I'm doing the Hancock VLOP. Plot one, plot two. So this is plot two. So this is the slow one. So, uh, so I'm doing slow crossing up, rolling VWAP once per bar close, and then I've got my web hook and I grab my alert info, 
This is in the interval symbol and the kite. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And what what do you probably have like thirty alerts to go with this uh uh, uh yeah, hang on, let me go to the trade lab here. The problem the problem is like this so the profit is is not anywhere accurate on trade lab because but I've discovered it, it. It's pulling at the time of close. It pulls whatever the last unrealized profit was on the trade. So it's not like if I'm decreasing the position, it only shows the last take or the or whatever amount it had at the very end of the trade. So I can't. I'm not using any of that. Yeah. So it's basically it's. I'm looking at the exchange, but uh, so let me go up in here. I'll show you the alert setup. So say one, two, three, four. Thirteen, fourteen ish. That's somewhere on there. Yeah, thank you. And variables I'm doing uh let's see. As you see, it's got all the different uh so I've got this is the other thing that I'm using to filter out. You no know, takes, for example. So if if just go find one that would be you know that way. So uh, that one's not. It'd be on one of these higher higher ones like this. So if you know if it kind of drops down a little bit, I'm trying to find an example. Technically, this is above thirty, right? And it would have taken this signal. Right, but this is going to be lower than this last one here, so I'm skipping this one. Yeah, uh, but this one would have been closed anyways because it would have already closed out up here, so it really wouldn't matter. But if if there was a uh, you know a really high peak and then a slightly lower one, it's going to skip the slightly lower one, wait for the next higher one before it takes again. Yeah, like this one right here you know it would have probably taken that because that's above 30 so this one would have been a, a, another signal but it would have skipped the signal because this one's lower than this one but it would take the next one you know that it gets which would be this guy up here so it's it's kind of skipping the little guys and going for the higher peaks <laughs> Yeah, so Fu Manchu is basically the open source version of Mark Cipher. It is really cool, but it, it, like money, the money flow, which is this big red thing here, is nowhere near as accurate as the paid version of Market Cipher. Uh, but the benefit that this has is these divergence alerts. You can actually signal these. You can send these uh, divergence uh, alerts uh, with the Fu Manchu. Uh, I, I, not in any of my strategies right now, I did per minute, but like, it, it, like this is telling me this down here is saying, Hey, get ready for a reversal, you know, like look for a reversal. And, and like this, would, this would, this trigger wave right here, if you were just using market cipher, this would be your entry right here. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm going back and forth and recording this. Uh, I have to turn my mic on and off so I don't get echoes. Uh, so to, to real quick to wrap this up, this is a couple different indicators. Fu Manchu's at the bottom. Uh, he's using a couple different uh, confirmations uh, to make all of this happen. We've shown all the alerts. We've shown uh, how the uh, rules are set up um, and just given a, a real quick overview on, on how that works. Um, is there anything else that we should cover before we end this? Any other questions? I just wanted to add that it's it's Fu Manchu with a V, just like Fu Manchu, but it's called a V. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually not using Fu Manchu in this particular strategy. Uh, I used to trade only with Market Cipher, uh, so this is a, this is a really nice indicator. Uh, but like as 
zoom in on it and kind of give you a little bit like it gives you these are like bottom signals uh the red lines up here so like this little red line here is showing you rsi divergences bigger thicker red line is showing you uh like mat b um divergences because this is basically just mat b with a, a backfill in it uh, so you know it, it, it shows you um that you know a potential moves coming like so this would kind of show you that it's getting ready to drop a little bit um yeah i i don't try to rely on just a single indicator for any of my trading i always like to have at least two or three different confirmations before i right. take a trade yeah and i think that's a good idea so for this example you actually aren't using vumanchu you were using the the vwap uh and the ema rsi yeah, so it, 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 this particular one is the 9 EMA uh, and the Hancock VWAP and the rolling VWAP. So they're really just using those, those together in conjunction with the RSI. And the RSI is set up on a 7 RSI link. I'm doing an EMA for the moving average. That's my take signals. And then I'm using the ADX. I have the ADX on a three smoothing uh, with the stock VI link. Um, and then essentially when the ADX, which is the blue line here, is above 30, I get these RSI cross crosses. Those are different alerts. Then I do a take. So if it's below 30, you get an RSI cross like this one, I'm not taking it. But uh, in this scenario, that would have been about where it closed anyways. So it would have closed out of the long position and waited. And once this uh, Hancock VWAP crosses up the rolling VWAP, it would have went long again. So uh, it would have been long and just waited it out and taken profit up here and closed out up again, up here. I'll be tweaking this. I think I'm going to add some additional conditions and start playing with uh adx a little bit more uh on on my closes uh but i mean this has been it seems to be working at the moment this is kind of a first first try with this type of setup but it seems to be pretty decent great so uh just to drive that home one more time so he is using multiple indicators um as he listed there and he showed and each of those indicators can send an alert through TradingView. Um, they have to send different alerts. That's how TradingView works. So you're actually using multiple different alerts here. And instead of every alert triggering a trade, we're using multiple confirmations. And so he's, he's shown a couple different uh, uh, indicators that he's using that he wants to confirm or in certain spots. And so he's uh, looking at where he wants it to be like in a certain spot and if it's in that spot he triggers the flag the true if it leaves that spot he triggers the flag the false and then he's saying okay are two of these things in the good spot at the same time right that's what we mean by multiple confirmation and that's and that's what we're using the rules for all right because if you didn't do any takes, takes it's pretty, pretty much just, just from like right around here to let's see the about all right there would be a two percent trade if you didn't do any take profits in between all right any other questions anybody i think this was an excellent excellent demonstration uh, it's fairly advanced. It shows sort of the power of what you can do, and uh, um, it's what you know. It's working, like you said, it's winning. So uh, everybody loves to see how a winning strategy works. All right, well, I'm gonna end the uh, recording here. Appreciate you guys for watching, uh, and subscribe for more updates. Have a good one.